So this video we're going to cover solving radical equations. Uh, specifically this one will cover square roots and we won't cover any cube roots or anything above that. Uh, so the big idea today, if two expressions are equal, so like if I have two numbers, let's say a is equal to this other number, b, then if I take those numbers and square them, they'll also be the same. And that'll work for any number. So for example, if I took like 3 is equal to 3, then I could square them, and obviously 9 is equal to 9. If negative 1 is the same as negative 1, when I square negative 1, it's the same thing as if I square negative 1. So we're going to use that today to undo square roots. So if we have a radical equation, and a radical equation, just using that fancy word for when we see something under a square root, um, what we need to do is we need to get that thing alone, and then we're going to undo a square root by squaring it. Um, so the first thing here is we don't want a minus 3. We're going to undo that with a plus 3 to both sides. So when we rewrite that, we still have the square root of x, and that is equal to 12. So as we talked about before, um, just previously, if we have two things that are equal to each other, then if we square those things, they are still equal to each other. So our main idea is obviously that a square and a square root undo each other. So we're left with x on the left side, and 12 squared is equal to 144. And that's our solution to the equation. And if we check our answer, I put that in for x, and I do the order of operations. I do this um, exponent here first, right, because the square root of x can also be written as an exponent. So we'd evaluate square roots first. That's 12. And we do see that 12 minus 3 is equal to 9. So our next example that just looks a little more complex is just the basic idea, though, that wherever we see the square root, we want to get that all by itself, and we're just going to undo the order of operations to do that. So we're going to undo addition and subtraction first. So we'll undo this plus 1 with a minus 1 to both sides. So when I rewrite that, I still have the negative 3 times the square root of 2x minus 1, and that's equal to negative 9. Now, we don't want the square root to be multiplied by negative 3. So our next step is that we are going to divide both sides by negative 3. So finally, we have the square root of 2x minus 1 all by itself, and that is equal to 3. So as we said before, if two things are equal to each other, then if we square those things, they're still equal to each other, and the square and the square root would undo each other. Now in this case, what we notice in our directions, we actually do have to solve for x, because x is not alone. So it's a pretty quick and simple equation from here. We add 1 to both sides. And then we will divide by 2 to get x alone. So we get x is equal to 5. And if we quickly check our answer, negative 3 times the square root of 2 times 5 minus 1 plus 1. I want to make sure that's equal to negative 8. Well, this expression here will evaluate to 9. And then negative 3 times the square root of 9, well, that's just 3. So that's going to be a negative 9 plus 1. And we do see that is equal to negative 8. Now, a few radical equations will have multiple radicals in them, um, and that's what we're just going to cover real quick here on a few examples. So here I can see there's a square root here, and there's a square root here. So the first thing that we want to try to do when we see multiple radicals is we want to try to combine them um, if we can. So what we see here is that both of these radical expressions have the same radicand, so we are able to combine them. So if we had three square roots of x and we added five more of those square roots of x, well, we'd have eight of those square root of x's. And then this just turns into the problem from before. Um, we are just going to divide both sides by 8 because we, now we only see one radical sign. If we only see one radical sign, then we know that we want to isolate that and get that all by itself. So we're left with the square root of x is equal to 4. And then we can square both sides to undo the square root on the left. So we get x is equal to 16. On this situation, we do see two radicals. We see this radical over here on the left, and then we see a radical over here on the right. Um, but the thing here is that we are not able to combine them, as we tried to in the last example. But here, since we're not able to combine them, so if two radicals remain, we want to rewrite this equation so the radicals are on separate sides. And in this case, they are. Um, so we don't need to do any rewriting on this one. But if they're on separate sides already, then what we're saying is we have two things that are equal to each other. So if we square them, they are still equal to each other. So on the left side, we're going to get 2x minus 1 because the square and the square root undo each other. And on the right side, we get x plus 4. So then from here, we just solve this linear equation. Um, I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So I get x minus 1 is equal to 4. So then when I add, I get x is equal to 5. And if we check our answer, if I plug 5 into the left side, 2 times 5 is 10. 10 minus 1 is 9. 
and on the right side, 5 plus 4 is 9, and we do know that the square root of 9 is equal to the square root of 9. The last thing that we're going to cover today with our radical equations is that we have to watch out for something called extraneous solutions. Extraneous solutions are apparent solutions that must be rejected because it does not satisfy the original equation. That's our textbook definition. So in other words, what we're going to do is we're going to do all our math correctly. We're going to solve the, um, the equation to our knowledge, what seems correct. But when we plug it back in at the end, it's not going to make the original equation true. Um, so that's why step number four or five or whatever it is in our solving equation um, our solving steps is always to check our answers because in these types of equations we might get an answer that's not actually an answer so we would need to cross it out and indicate that that's not a solution. So let's go through an example like that here. Um, so this type of problem we see that there's only one square root so we want to isolate that square root which it already is so now if two things are equal we can square those things and they will still be equal. So on the left side the square and the square root undo each other, so I get x plus 6. On the right side, x squared is just written as x squared. So now we do see we have a quadratic equation. When we have a quadratic equation, we really want to get it equal to 0, because then we can start to use our discriminant and, and figure out a way to solve this. So I'm going to subtract x and subtract 6 from both sides. So x minus x is 0, 6 minus 6 is 0, and then I can't combine any of those terms there. So I have it in our standard form here. So we're going to quickly calculate the discriminant, because if we calculate the discriminant, we can figure out the best solving method. So our b value is negative 1. We would square that minus 4 times our a value times our c value. So we get 1. And this expression here, a negative and a negative will be a positive. And then 6 times 4 is 24. So we get the number 25. And that is a perfect square. So that means we are going to factor this. So we're going to factor into x minus 3 and x plus 2. So now when we set those factors equal to 0, we get our two solutions of x is equal to 3 and x is equal to negative 2. Now what we need to do is we need to check. So we're going to check over here in green. So let's check our first solution of x equals 3. So if we plug that in for x in each situation where we see it into the original equation and we simplify, this one looks good. The square root of 3, or excuse me, the square root of 9 is 3. So 3 is equal to 3, so this one checks out. But now when we check the number negative 2, we plug it into both sides. So we'd be taking the square root of negative 2 plus 6, and that should be equal to negative 2. But here we get the square root of 4 being equal to negative 2, and that is just simply not true. So this is an example of an extraneous solution. And what I do have very quickly is a picture of the graph, um, because it's important to connect that back to our graph. So when we look at this picture here that I just put in, so we have our radical. Obviously, we can see that general shape of the radical equation right here x plus 6, we can see that it's shifted left 6. Um, and we can see that our line, just y equals x, is right here in blue. And we see that they touch 1, where the x value is equal to 3. And that's the solution that we checked, and it worked. Our extraneous solution of x equals negative 2 on the graph, x equals negative 2 um, is right here. And we can see that there is no intersection on either graph at x equals negative 2. So our last example for today um, we see in this equation that there are two separate square roots. Um, however, we cannot combine them. So what we need to do is isolate them onto different sides of the equation. So I'm going to add the square root of 3x plus 6 to both sides. So we'd be left with the square root of 2x is equal to the square root of 3x plus 6. So if two things are equal, then we can square them to undo their squares, and they're still equal. So the left side turns into 2x, and the right side turns into 3x plus 6. A pretty simple linear equation for us to solve. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides, which gives me negative x is equal to 6. But I don't want the opposite of x. I want regular x. So I divide by negative 1, and I get x is equal to negative 6. Now, if we're going to check that, though, which is always important, because I want to make sure there's no extraneous solutions, um, if I plug in negative 6, into both instances where I see x. I'm going to simplify a little bit here. So this would be the square root of negative 12 
minus the square root, so negative 18 plus 6 is also negative 12. And we can't take the square root of a negative number when we're using real numbers, so this solution doesn't work, so there are no solutions to this equation. The one that we thought was a solution was actually extraneous. And very quickly, just looking at a graph to see what that would be represented as when we look at, or did it on a calculator. We can see here that the square root equation on the left Right, these have square roots, so that's our equation right there. When will it ever equal zero? Right, when will it ever touch the x-axis? Well, we can see that this green curve is going to continue to go downward, so it'll never touch the x-axis.